Welcome to my world of allegorical symbol translations. Ancient symbols throughout the world illuminate the path of the enlightenment of cultures, faiths, and religions. However, what the explicit symbolic message says is usually far different from the understanding of the implicit messages hidden in the symbols, which requires one to delve deeper in the perspective of their customs, myths, and rituals. The Norse sought knowledge, power, magic, and protection through their symbolism. From the 8th through the 11th centuries, the Viking Age spawned the image of savage raiders pillaging unsuspecting innocent seafaring traders and land-dwelling farmers. It might surprise you to find out their concept of law was fair, poetry rich, and knowledge expansive. Overall, the Germanic-based Norse of the Scandinavian countries were opportunists, explorers and merchants seeking land and trade, and plunder which eventually found themselves immersed in the cultures they conquered. The Kensington and Narragansett runestones, found on American soil, are separated by hundreds of miles, but are closely connected to each other by a mysterious X symbol with a hook. The translation of the Narragansett runestone found in Rhode Island is a primer to understanding of the variant runic alphabets to bring insight into the later translation of the Kensington runestone found in Minnesota. All runic alphabets are similar, but the symbols and numbers of letters in each alphabet depends on era and location, as letters fluidly took on modifications throughout time. In reality, runes were late in the Semitic language game. Phoenician inscriptions are the oldest verifiable alphabet dating 1050 BC, and then were followed by Hebrew, Aramic, Arabic, and Greek, with runes sliding in around 150 AD. Old Norse existed for 3,000 years until being mainly displaced by Latin and other Romantic languages of particular regions. The oldest runic alphabet, the Elder Futhark, dates from 150 to 800 AD and is named for the first six letters, Fehu, Urus, Thuraza, Ansus, Raidho, and Kanaz, with Thuraza representing TH. The Elder alphabet then morphed into the Younger Futhark that was used from 800 to 1100 AD. If you notice the number of letters decreased from the elder to the younger alphabet. Over time, the runic alphabet hosted between 16 to over 30 letters. The rune master's carvings used all variations of letters at times and also utilized abbreviations as is common in Latin inscriptions. In 1984, the Narragansett New World runestone was discovered on the shore of Rhode Island by a Quahog clam digger who contacted the Rhode Island Historical Preservation and Heritage Commission. The commission's personnel believed the stone may have been buried upland, and its journey probably began with the Great Hurricane of 1938, and due to dramatic erosion of the shoreline, worked its way down to Pojack Point and was left in shifting tides 20 feet from the extreme low tide mark. The rock of the rune stone is meta sandstone that has been altered by heat and pressure and has the dimensions of seven by five by two feet and weighs approximately 5,550 pounds. From my reading, way too much time has been invested in the authentication of the rune stones in North America than trying to translate the messages. Perhaps if my translated message makes sense to you, you will authenticate it in your mind and leave behind the trivia of infighting between scholars and aficionados. Once again, we're going to see many symbols that have already appeared in my previous translations. The Norse believed that carving runes on stone and wood bestowed magic powers. In fact, the word rune means secret or whisper. And in this translation, I'll be profiling the Anglo-Saxon alphabet, which was in use from 400 to 1100 AD. I have erased the captions for the ones used in this Narragansett runestone on this table and will fill them in as I explain their meaning. I'll be using the Elder Futhark names and symbols because I'm most familiar with them. However, keep in mind that the Elder Futhark alphabet predates the Old Norse language and Old Norse was written in Younger Futhark. In this case, the Elder is pretty much the same except for the C because K for Kanaz was used instead of C in the Older alphabet. As I translate the runic text, I'll point out the important differences. If you would like further explanations for each Elder Futhark rune, you can find the link to the Winds of Jupiter Tarot website in the description box below. The Valcomen rune cards that are profiled for each letter in this translation can be purchased on that website. 
The first rune on the left is the willow for the letter S and means the sun. It's the power of life, light, and illumination representing the warmth of a ray of light or the destructive forces of lightning, but most importantly, it means victory or symbolizes discovery. The Anglo-Saxon and Old English name of the rune is sigil, which is derived from the Latin word sigillum, meaning seal or sign, and refers to soul, the sun, the goddess of the sun in the Germanic mythology. If you've been following along with my videos, you are more than familiar with the word sigillum from my seal translations. In Old Norse, the word sigir means victory. The next symbol represents the binding of two runes for a number of reasons that will be discovered in this translation. Combining or binding of runes was rare during the Viking Age, but became more popular later. The next symbol is a combination of the I for the Isa rune and the X for the Gabo rune. Isa means ice and stagnation and is a rune that reminds you to look at things from many perspectives before determining your best course of action. The X Gabo rune means gift as well as energy that is given, exchanged, or received. To give is to gain, and it's also the gift of sacrifice. Sacrifice of any kind for the exchange of wisdom is considered a worthy endeavor, and for love is considered loyalty. The Sawilo rune, combined with the Isa and Gabo runes, spells out the abbreviation SIG SIG for victory. In fact, the next letter is an R, but the R is also used in the next word of the message. Let's talk about the binding of the IX runes for a minute. The 8th century Ruthwell Cross and Ruthwell Scotland is carved in Anglo-Saxon runes and combined IX for the word modig, meaning courageous or brave and also has a similar rune that's unnamed. In fact, the cross is considered one of the oldest works of Old English literature and contains 18 verses of the Christian poem, Dream of the Rood, Rood meaning cross. This poem is carved entirely in runes. This saltir symbol keeps appearing in my translations and two saltir configurations in my videos point to treasure locations, one on Oak Island and another location near the town of Renes Le Chateau in France. The next rune is Raid Ho for the letter R, meaning spokes of a wheel or radius of a circle, and infers motion, travel, journey, or visitors from afar, as well as arrivals, departures, returnings, and unions. The Raid Ho rune is associated to the blessings of the oak tree related to the construction of ships. The next rune is Othala for the letter O, and is thought to be from High German for the words Odel or Opel, meaning noble, and encompassing legacy, ancestry, inheritance, and possessions that you can't take to the bank because they're priceless. The next rune is a reverse K or C. In fact, the Anglo-Saxon alphabet is called Futhark because that is where the C was introduced, whereas the elder alphabet is called Futhark with a K. The K rune is Kanaz and means torch, light, enlightenment, or burning. The three runes spell out the Old Norse plural noun of Rok, meaning origin, reasoning, or fate. Even within the Elder Futhark period, the K rune evolved into various similar shapes facing all different ways. In this instance, the K stroke is facing to the left. Rune carving and their interpretation is not an exact science. During the carving, the rune master could take many creative liberties with shapes and spellings or borrow from runes from older alphabets. For example, the circa 1000 AD rune stone found in England has the K rune stroking to the left as is seen in the Narragansett runestone that we'll also see on the Kensington runestone as well, and the M rune dotted that is not commonly seen until the medieval runic alphabets appear in circa 13th century. Many stones that survived are eulogies and gravestone memorials. When the Anglo-Saxons, Germanic tribes of Europe, became Christians, they somewhat adopted the use of the Latin alphabet, and later in the evolution of runes, some letters were easier to identify if you turned them upside down, and the letter L is one of them. So the last two letters are L-I, meaning Loki, the shape-shifting god of fire with an evil disposition that was the antithesis of the Norse great god Odin. And in the mind of the Norse, Loki personified Satan. 
The name Loki is believed to come from a variant of a Scandinavian word for knot or web. And in the Norse mythologies, Loki usually entangled himself in predicaments from his scheming ways. So the first line of the runes on the Narragansett runestone translates into victory, fate, Loki. And once they landed on the shores of the New World, they probably fell on their knees thanking their god Odin. And in the two runes below, it appears the X with the hook is honoring and thanking Odin. The two runes on the line below are Gable, X with the hook, and Ansus for an A. Let's review Ansus first so we can understand the meaning of Gable with a hook. Ansus means God and is the rune of Odin, the Norse supreme god of knowledge, wisdom, communication, creation, poetry, and war. The poetic Ada is a collection of Old Norse anonymous poems of wisdom and is the most important source of insight into the Norse myths and gods. The following Hovamal poem directly from the Norse words is the key to the mystery of the X with a hook symbol. Hovamal means the words of the High One, attributed to the god Odin, as Odin is unquestionably the High One, the one who sacrificed himself for the wisdom of the runes. Wounded, I hung on a windswept gallows for nine long nights pierced by a spear, pledged to Odin, offered myself to myself. The wisest know not from whence spring, the roots of the ancient rood. They gave me no bread, they gave me no mead. I looked down, with a loud cry, I took up the runes, from that tree I fell. As Jesus Christ walked by the Sea of Galilee, he met two brothers, Simon who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They became Jesus' first apostles. Andrew was crucified on an X-shaped cross or a saltire cross, and his brother Simon Peter went into martyrdom by crucifixion on an upside-down Latin cross. As Jesus was crucified, his side was pierced by a spear. These three chronicles were enough for the Norse to equate Odin's plight of seeking the wisdom of the runes to the Christian Bible. However, to the Norse, the rude or cross that Odin hung from was in the shape of a saltire that signified his sacrifice on the gable rune. However, Gaifu is the name of the GX rune in the Anglo-Saxon alphabet, meaning gift, generosity, and sacrifice, whereas we learn the corresponding elder Futhark rune is gable, and in the Gothic runic alphabet it's Giba. This GX rune derived directly from the Latin letter X, Therefore, Gaifu is Odin's gift of life to humans, generosity of keeping them safe during battle, and his sacrifice for the wisdom of the runes. The X with the hook translates into a G with the superscript Y and U to signify the Anglo-Saxon rune Gaifu. Keep in mind the letters Y, U, and W represent the Urus rune for sacrifice and actually means Arak, a wild ox. Therefore, the Norse equated Odin's sacrifice of hanging from Yggdrasil, their world tree, to receive the secrets of the runes with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, because the X symbolizes Jesus. This rune binds G and U, which is the abbreviation for the Old Norse word for God, Gud, meaning to call or invoke. If the G and Y is switched around, it signifies YG or Yurg, which is one of many names for Odin. Yggdrasil in Old Norse means gallows. However, all this goes further than that to explain the hook attached to the X. Odin's spear is called Gungnir and is referred to as the Spear of Heaven with a point that cannot be broken. Odin's magical spear held the power of all the runes. The Gungnir welded by Odin is the very same spear that pierced him as he hung from Yggdrasil for nine nights in order to receive the wisdom of the runes. Their god Odin of universal wisdom and victory would throw Gungir over the heads of his enemies before battle yelling, Odin own you all. This wild call gradually became the symbol of the Viking warriors. In the Havamal poem, Odin says, never go a single step without a weapon by your side because you never know when you'll need a spear. The spear never missed its target. Odin's spear and their god of war Tyr and his sword were symbols of their power and authority. The word Gungnir means swaying, as in winning influence, and govern the fortune of war. 
Odin was the lord of the spear. As a result, the hook on the X signifies Gungnir and the unbreakable point of his spear. The Old English word for spear is Gar, and the Gaifu and Anzu's runes together are the abbreviation GA for Gar. In fact, the third rune up above on line 1 is an R. The Gar rune has been added to the Anglo-Saxon alphabet. If we erase the majority of the square around the X, it makes the X with the hook for the Gar rune that means spear. So the complete skeletal message of the Narragansett runestone is victory, fate, Loki, God, Odin, sacrifice, spear. Or the more pleasing modern English translation is victory of fate over Loki from God, Odin, sacrifice as the Lord of the spear. Now let's translate the Narragansett rune text from Old French and see what the message says. The message is Sig for the Old French word Signor or Signor for noble or lord from the Latin word Signorum. The next three letters could be ROI with the I binding a backward C. ROI, Wa, in Old French is King. The message so far is Noble King. The letters that were L-I for Loki now turn into the Roman numerals V-1 for 6. And we'll find out that the C represents Charles. So the message is Noble King Charles VI. This runic message is believed to date circa 1400 AD. King Charles VI of France reigned for an amazing 42 years between the years 1368 to 1422 AD. King Charles was known as beloved to his face and mad behind his back because he became delusional at times and killed his own knights and men. He was known to go into mad rages and wallow in depression for long periods of time. Pirates, mercenaries, and military ships sailed back and forth across the English Channel during the Hundred Years' War that extended between 1337 to 1453 from royal family disputes over the Kingdom of France's rulership. Perhaps the Rune Master's journey across the Atlantic began unintentional from the misfortune of a storm, or perhaps the Norse on that ship were seeking religious freedom from the persecution of the Christians. This could indicate a Norman background. Now let's translate the Kensington Rune Stone that was discovered inland in Minnesota, the land of over 10,000 lakes from glacial activity. The stone is a 202 pound slab of gray wacky very hard and dark colored sandstone. It's covered with 12 lines of runic symbols, nine lines on one face and three on the side. A Swedish immigrant, Olaf Ullman, reportedly discovered the rune stone in 1898 while clearing land for crops. The stone was named after the nearest rural settlement of Kensington in Douglas County, Minnesota. The supposed date on the rune text is 1362. However, the runes are not exclusively from the medieval runic alphabet when the dots on some runes were introduced. Although most equate the runestone with the exploration of the Vikings, the date 1362 is 300 years after the Viking Age. Norse pantheon worship never had a formal name other than the Old Way, while Christianity to them was considered the New Way. When the Kensington runestone was carved, it was located in the sacred space of a small island surrounded by a shallow lake, a dedicated area to honor the dead. In fact, the function of most rune stones is to eulogize the dead. This has no feeling of a marker outlining boundaries for land acquisition as believed. Renowned geologist Newton Horace Winchell spearheaded much of the geological studies of the Kensington rune stone, and a number of linguists have varied translation of the runes. Here's an early interpretation of the runes by Jalmer Holland. Eight Goths and 22 Norwegians on this discovery voyage from Vinland over the west. We had camped by two scurries, one day's journey north from this stone. We were and fished one day after we came home, found ten men red from blood and dead. AVM, Ave Virgo Maria, saved from evil. The text on the side of the stone states, have ten men by the sea to see after our ship 14 days journey from this island, year 1362. Many aspects of the runestone have already been analyzed, or more appropriately overanalyzed. 
I'm only going to make observations that will take us down a path of more understanding of its hidden messages. Even though the Narragansett runestone is very brief, there are some obvious similarities. Outside of the presence of the X with the hook, you'll note that the backward stroke K or C is also on both runestones. Nevertheless, what's interesting about the Kensington runestone is that the X with the hook functions as an A in the text. Therefore, it appears the rune master combined the concept of X of the Gai Fuji rune for sacrifice with the A for Ansus for God and Odin. This could also point out another Old Norse name for Odin, Alphadir, meaning All Father or Father of Men, although Odin has many alter ego names. Thus, the concept of God and Odin are in two separate thoughts in the Narragansett rune and one in the Kensington rune stone with the X with a hook signifying Odin's sacrifice and Grugnir, his magic spear of heaven that brings victory to their battles. The X with the hook is symbolic of the Norse holding on to their old way through the runic symbolism of language, for writing was the greatest gift from Odin and was the driving force of their cultural bonds. The other oddity of interest of the Kensington runestone is the AVM in Latin letters. If you notice, this is reinforcing the A that equates to the X for the Gaifu with the superscript Y or U for the Urus rune, because V was synonymous with Y and U at the time. Let's translate the AVM into runes. Ansus is the rune of God and Odin. Urus is the rune of sacrifice. And M, Iwas, is the rune of loyalty and love. So the message for AVM could be God, Odin, Sacrifice, and Loyalty. And then again it might simply mean Ave Virgo Maria, or Hail the Virgin Mary. At this point I have one quick comment. The M appears to be separated, and could be read as the runes for L and T. The word Alt is a variant of Alt, meaning Old and Old Norse. Could this be a message that they are loyal to the old way? Otherwise, the entire Kensington runestone would have been carved in Latin, which I'm sure the rune master spoke and wrote. You may think the Norse antiquated system of writing doesn't affect you today, but the Anglo-Saxon words writen, meaning to carve runes, and writen, meaning to interpret runes, became our English words to write and to read. And also the majority of our names for the days of the week came from Old Norse. Tuesday is from Tyr, the Norse god of war. Wednesday is from Woden, an Old English variant of Odin. Thursday is from Thor. And Friday is from Freya, the Norse goddess of love, beauty, sex, war, and death. Saturday is from the word Sabbath. And Sunday is the day to worship the sun, while Monday is the day to worship the moon. Odin was the power of weird and the bender of Orlog. The Norse word weird is the root to our English word weird, meaning fate. Orlog means the primal law of things and embodies weird's fate, imposed by the three Norns, the Norse goddesses of destiny, binding that which is, that which is becoming, and that which should become. On my last video, I translated the Seal of Zion from the Abbey of Dormition, or Abbey of Our Holy Lady of Mount Zion in Jerusalem. Now here's a jaw-dropping comparison of the italicized Y or V on the Seal of Zion with the Kensington X with a hook. Now how did the same symbol that dates circa 1289 AD from Mount Zion show up on a rock attached to a Nordic rune along the shoreline of North America dated 1362 AD? This unusual seal has rays of light descending with a dove onto alien-looking beings which is quite the attention grabber for our modern times. The italicized V or Y on the top left of the seal before the Georgian Macadruli letter T that functions as an M appears to translate into VM to signify Virgin Mary or Virgo Maria, which the Norse most likely equated to their goddess Freya of love and beauty. I've equated this hook symbol with the Hebrew letter Vav, which actually means hook or peg and the by name X with a hook is incredibly appropriate for it on the runes. If you think like a Norse, 
This also appears to have the message of Alpha and Omega hidden in it for the first and last, that in Christianity and first Christ. Here's what Alpha and Omega looks like in Greek. In Hebrew, it has the X-shaped Aleph and the N-shaped Tav, but in Hebrew, these would be read backwards. On the bottom is the Norse rendition of Ansus with an F-shape and Urus with an N-shape. If the Greek or Latin A is used instead of Ansus, we have symbols that are very similar to the Greek Alpha and Omega. Therefore, the Latin AVM found on the Kensington runestone could translate into Mary first and last. Who was there when Jesus was born, and who was there when he died? Unfortunately, little has survived about the roles of Norse goddesses for any comparisons. I debated whether to mention this, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say perhaps Odin equated to God. The Virgin Mary possibly represented Freya for the Holy Ghost, and Odin's son Baldur, who was killed by a spear by his blind brother, symbolized Jesus because later Baldur was resurrected during the last battle of Ragnarok to save the gods. The Hebrew letter Vav has been mentioned a number of times in my prior videos and now has a connection to the hook on the X and the italicized V or Y on the seal of Zion. Since the Norse outwardly practiced Christianity while secretly retaining their old way, there's no reason that they didn't adopt some Judean concepts along the way. Associating the spike on the X with the hook seems very appropriate since the Hebrew letter Vav actually means hook or pig, but most importantly symbolizes the binding of heaven and earth, as above so below. Yagdrasil, the Norse tree of life, depicts branches reaching skyward and the roots extending into the earth, symbolizing the link between heaven and earth. On top of that, Jesus sacrificed himself and resurrected from the dead and ascended into heaven. And Odin sacrificed himself to himself and resurrected from the dead, and his son Baldir also resurrected. Jesus ushers the worthy into heaven, and Odin ushered the worthy into their heaven Vahaya, Hall of the Fallen. As Christianity promises, one day there will be a combined resurrection and rapture of all the believers coming after the Great Tribulation during the end times. And the Norse Ragnarok was a foretold twilight of the gods and a time of great destruction where those in Bahia would join the gods in the final battle against the forces of evil. Ragnarok means fate of the gods. There's one more thing I'd like to mention before I go. What was the king of the Scandinavian countries doing at the time when the Kensington runestone was carved? This seal indicates that King Magnus Eriksson IV was king of Norway, Sweden, and Gorderum, or Gotland, between 1319 and 1374 AD and his association to the Goths of Gorderum from the seal doesn't really jive completely with the history books. Once again, the unique VM is found in the last letters of the word Sigillum and could be translated as sign of the Virgin Mary. Interestingly enough, Sigillum and Gorderum have the unique VM, but the word Sweden at the bottom of the seal does not. Magnus's father, Duke Eric Magnuson, had a seal that states he had a secret spelled secretum, that uses the V with the unusual M in the word secret, and also has the VM on the word Sweden. The word secretum means secret, and also secretion as in fluids or blood, which could be identifying a bloodline. Did the Duke and his son have a secret? Is this unique VM together a signature of a hidden order that extends back to the time of the Crusades, or perhaps even before the Crusades? for the seal of Zion has an older version of this possible signature. Comparing the Kensington and Narragansett runestone symbolic meaning of X's with a hook expanded the understanding of the Norse's frame of mind regarding the Old Norse word rock, meaning fate, and the other true meaning of ratio for reason or comparative reason to be more exact. Thinking logically broadened the scope of the word rock to reveal a grasp of the origin of the X's with the hook and the fate of divine providence. Paradoxically, divine providence was at work to bring us all together collectively at this juncture for understanding of the rune's possible message of victory, fate, Loki, God, Odin, sacrifice, and spear. The word rock for fate and ratio also encompasses the first Old English words translated from the Oak Island stone, ord, meaning point of origin, 
point of a weapon are placed, and parallels the idea of a point of a spear. The second word found expanded or to word for the providence of the word of God and logical thinking, which parallels the meaning of rock for reasoning. And the third word of the same series translated into the word sword for the destructive nature of man. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment to support my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Stay tuned for my next translation of the Saltier symbol, or perhaps a quick video on the heaven or runestone that was found in Oklahoma, unless I find something else that draws my attention. Thank you for visiting my channel.